Do you know why we use steroids in septic shock? Let's talk about steroids. This is literature that spans decades where people went back and forth and back and forth on whether or not steroids improve mortality for patients in septic shock. Well, it turns out more recently, more of the data supports that it does. Even though we'll talk about vasopressors pretty soon, what you should know is that any patient who's in refractory vasopressor shock is a candidate to receive steroids, specifically hydrocortisone and the addition of flutrocortisone. We can debate the flutrocortisone later, but just trust me. There are three reasons why you want to use steroids for your patients in septic shock. The first is you have a relative adrenal insufficiency that happens in septic shock where the adrenals can't keep up with the amount of cortisol that's needed. So you get a relative deficiency and the hydrocortisone makes up for that. The second reason has to do with vascular permeability and vasodilation of your arteries and veins. As you know, sepsis is a distributive shock and you get vasoplegia, so you get blood vessels that dilate. Steroids helps the receptors on those blood vessels to become more sensitive to vasopressors so you can get higher venous return with venoconstriction and higher mean arterial blood pressure with less vasopressor dose. The biggest reason is when you have a patient who's in septic shock, there is a massive explosion of inflammation that's happening. This inflammation is protective for some patients, but goes over the top on other patients. And a cytokine storm that happens from the release of these pro-inflammatory cytokines causes a large response that, that goes far in excess of the immune protection that should be happening with the inflammation modulators that are released. Steroids tempers that response to keep it in check. And when this response gets out of control, it can actually cause harm to end organs and cause increased morbidity and mortality for the patients. So hydrocortisone helps to keep that inflammatory cascade in check so it doesn't wind up harming the patient. Now this list is not exhaustive. There's lots more reasons, but this is social media, so we gotta be quick and fast. Drop any other mechanisms that I might miss. And I also want to know the doses that you like to use for patients in septic shock.